me to celebrate the life of our beloved Sri Piyush Kant Parma, who I refer to as Piyush Pupari. Piyush Pupari, a doting and loving husband to Shubha, devoted father of Nishikant, who we know as Chinku, Surbhi, Tina and Asad, and other grandfather of Sohani, Shivika, Nandana and Kashmi and a friend and guide and a mentor to many. I am Neeraj, married into the family through Shahadi. All because of Piyush Pupaji and Shubhabhuva's blessings. They are the only reason I am here uh, today as part of the family in front of you. Piyush Pupaji and Shubhabhuva met me first and approved of me for the marriage, you know, which was done fairly professionally and a very smart way, I must say. Since that time, he has not just been my Pufaji, he has actually ever been more uh, my local guardian and my guide. I have known Pufaji for over 30 years now, as a guide, as a mentor, even as a friend. But when I think back and I reflect, I just feel that I have probably known him among the entire friend and family circle for the least number of years. And that says a lot about the strength of relationship and longevity which of relationships which Piyush Shufaji have had for several years over his lifetime. Piyush Shufaji came from, a, in a, from an illustrious family of Alabai. Both his father and grandfather served as Chief Justice of Allahabad High Court. His elder brother, Mr. Rajni Kant Varma, has been the topper of the civil services exam in his batch. Pufaji himself joined the IAS in 1970 and served the government of governments of Punjab and Chandigarh for over 40 years. Amongst his many postings, he was also the secretary to the governor of Punjab and Home Secretary of Chandigarh. He retired from IAS in 2006 and the public services as the information commissioner in 2011. In 1973, he married the extremely beautiful and hopelessly romantic Shubhasana. I say romantic because together they sang many duets and, uh, and in most cases uh, with at the drop of the hat from requests for people. The famous duet obviously being, which he sang most of the no number of times, Ye Rate, Ye Mausam, Ye Hasna Hasana. Right from his early days, Piyush Pufaji was a trailblazer in his own right. Great example of this was when his son Chinku was born in Patna in 1974. When he insisted on entering the labor room, much to the horror of not only his in-laws but also the doctors of PMCH. At that time, definitely very early. Piyush Pufaji was special because he went beyond his pedigree and privilege. He was a true gentleman. His helpful nature, his kindness, his jovial and positive nature, his penchant for punctuality, his disciplined lifestyle, his love for golf, bridge, and Netflix, his sharp mind and ever sharper wit endeared him to all. There's so many things which I can continue and go on and on about you, Shofari. But right now, I think it is very important that the people closest to him share some of their life's journey and uh, their memories of Piyush <coughs> I would like to invite Mr. Rajni Kant Parma, I first retired, Piyush Rufaji's elder brother, to say a few words about Rufaji. Ladies and gentlemen, as the previous speaker just told you, I am Piyush Kant Parma's elder brother. Rajni Kant Varma. I joined the Foreign Service in 1965 and he joined the IS in 1970 because I am four and a half years older than him. And I suppose it's instinctive, but one doesn't expect somebody younger than one to criticize him. It never, never, never occurred to me that a day would come when he would be no more and I would still be around. 
and still a sense of shock and disbelief, particularly as the evening before I had a long conversation on the telephone, a video talk, when I could see him and he looked quite cheerful. He wanted me to sing a song, Shubha said to sing a song for him, and I couldn't think of Lal Lal Dal, which I sang in my toneless voice. And then I told him a joke, a golfing joke, which I think he understood, but he couldn't speak because he had a hole in his throat. But he smiled, I thought. Anyway, he was feeling sleepy, so I couldn't talk to him too long. But he did seem to be recovering quite well. So it was a great shock next morning to be told that he is no more. Anyway, I suppose we have to accept these things as the will of God. I recalled at that time all the various things, times we had spent together, happy times. Because I think in this whole world, I knew him for longer than anybody else, practically from the day he was born till his last time, his last days. Though of course in later life, because of my foreign posting and his posting, we could not spend too much time together. Still, we did what we could. We went on an Alaska cruise together. We went on a holiday to China together. And whenever we had to go somewhere, the first thought that struck me was, can, I, can we be together? So when my sister's husband, my brother-in-law, passed away about six months ago, about a year ago, I immediately thought of him. And since we had to go to Bhopal, we went together. I think I speak for all of you when I say that to know him was to love him. Of all the qualities of hell not, which he doubtless had, his sharp mind, etc., his heart of gold, I think what endeared him to all of us was that he was so lovable. To know him was to love him. He was a rare combination of a person who had the authority to help the others and who always did his best to do so. And he will be remembered as such by everybody, especially of course those who were his beneficiaries, but by everybody else who was fortunate enough to get to know him. My mind goes back to our early childhood when he was a little boy. I still remember when he started going to school. Every morning he'd ask our mother, our school how we should tea? And usually he got a disappointing reply, school how? And he had to go to school. Anyway, once a week he had his joy of hearing it's a chutti. And his face would light up at the thought they didn't have to go to school. As I was telling his children today, if you miss school, there's something wrong either with your home or your school. Because going to school at my time was not considered a joy. And it was truly we all felt very happy. Other thing that I remember about him, particularly well known within the family, but not so well known perhaps outside, are when he was a little older, after every puja, they would make thal of a lot of mishai various varieties of Madhichu, Gula, Jamun, whatever it is. And we would take it round to him and say, what Prashant would like? And he would say, hum ke, ek e, aur ek e, aur ek e, till he had gone through the whole lot of Mithai, which was the Thal. That was his selection of what he would like to have. Anyway, he was given whatever he wanted, whatever could be spared. Later on in life, of course, again a very well-known story in our family is how he admiringly looked after my father when he put my mother in her place. Those are the days my father's generation when one could talk to one's wife freely. So my mother always made something for breakfast, something fresh, pakoris and things like that, which he had with his normal breakfast. One day, he didn't like what my mother prepared to him. And he called out to her. He always called her Indy, which I suspect stood for Nedma Darling, but it was considered too explicit for conservative Alaba society. We belong to Alaba. So anyway, he said, Andy, ye kya banana tumne? Do kodi kaya, bhoot kharaab hai. And there was Piyush Khan looking up at him in admiration. And he said, Baba, you 
you speak to Amma like this, you can. So my father said, of course. What would you say to Shuba if she made something like this? My brother said, well, normally when she makes something for me, if it's okay, I say, wah, wah, and wah. If it is not quite good, then I say, wah, wah. <laughs> so, so anyway, there's a kind of legend in our family now. When something is very good, we say, wah, wah, and wah. When it is not to our liking, we say only wah, once or twice at most. So that's a gradation. But of course, no, no, none of us dare speak to our wives, then my father would speak to my father. That, that's a generational gap, I suppose. So anyway, my brother Piyushan was very skilled in, in many ways. He was a very good bridge player. He and I had our disagreements, of course. I like to think no, that no two thinking intelligent people can always agree on everything. And it's especially bad when you are in the wrong, when you know that you, your argument has no sense that the other person is right. How can you possibly agree with this? Everybody knows that. So we used to have disagreements, and he would say, why do you call this, why do you not do this? And I would say, of course, you are wrong. In my heart of hearts, yeah, I knew he's a far superior bridge player, and what he's saying is right. But I could not possibly accept that. So we had long arguments, and they usually ended nowhere. But he was a very good bridge player. Only someone in first class mind like his could play bridge the way he did. And at some stage, I decided that relationships are more important than bridge and I just stopped playing bridge. But anyway, when I think of it, he was so helpful. What I had in mind was to tell my wife before I died that if you have any problem, please contact Piyush Kant, he'll help you. He will resolve all problems that you have. And I thought all the bureaucratic snags, it's not easy to die. It's not easy to live, neither is it easy to die. And I, and I thought I'd tell her that you must consult him. He was made to not show the finer thing of life. He liked his whiskey, but though he drank in great moderation, almost medicinal qualities in later life, by drops. But I was going to leave my hoard of good scotch whiskey to him. Now I'll have to find somebody. Uh, I don't think I'll find an equally good Russia, but somebody a poor substitute. But anyway, there's so many things. As I said, I never imagined that he could predecease me. He was four and a half younger than me. Uh, four and a half years younger than me, and I had to go some time before him, but that was not to be. But thank you very much for coming. I think I shouldn't speak too long because there's so much I can talk about, about Piyush and about my relationship with him. But thank you very much. I would like now to call upon Major Nirpen Sangwa, who I call Nipi Amtu, a loyal and trusted friend of Piyush Mufaji. While I say friend, I think he's been more as a brother to Piyush Shufaji for over the last 45 years. Nipiyanku, please. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> we are all here to condone and remember our dear Piyush Kant Burma, who left us so suddenly on 11 February. His passing away has deeply saddened and shocked us all. I met him for the first time on the 8th of Jan January 1982 when I was posted to the Punjab Raj Bhavan as ADC to Governor of Punjab. And he too was posted in the Raj Bhavan as Secretary to the Governor. I have had a very close connect with him ever since, more so as a younger brother too. I always found him to be very humorous diligent, and very punctual and honest to the core. He was a very rare person and so very intimate with everybody that he met. He was very kind-hearted, always willing to help, more so the lesser privileged. He would go out of his way to be helpful to everyone who approached him with any kind of problem. I always addressed him fondly as Sarji. <coughs> Sarji and I learned and started playing golf in the early 90s. And his punctuality and time plan lead to very humorous recalls. 
Since, since we played together, usually I would pick him up on the way to the golf club. He would suggest a time plan to the second. If we were to start the game at 6.30 a.m., then he would work backwards. He would say, uh, say, we have to be there at 6.25 at the tee. Walking to the tee will take two minutes from the car. Parking the car will take two and a half minutes. From my house to the golf course is three minutes. From your house in sector nine to my place is four minutes. Therefore, you must leave your place latest by 13 minutes past six. And you will find me at the gate, where I always would find him. If I went there a little earlier, he would come out at the right time at 17 minutes past six. Or if I was late, I would get a call from him. Meanwhile, I was driving. But I'd never pick it up because he would give me a blasting. And when I reached there, he would say, now you got late, now we'll miss her. Somebody else will take our slot. And I would have to hear all that throughout till we reached <laughs> the team. And then if he called me on the phone sometimes, on the good old landline, and my children would pick it up, <coughs> he would tell them, hurry. Get your dad on the phone. So my son and daughter had nicknamed him lovingly as Hari Hari Uncle. <laughs> because he was always in such a hurry, he would say. And he was, whatever he spoke on the phone, it was always to the point exact. And in a hurried manner, he'll tell me. <laughs> so I would tell him, and I would very much tell him in the same way. Yes, 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 sir, yes, sir. So, his mind was so quick and analytical. I have to come across, I have come across very few people of the same caliber. Even if I asked him how a cheese toast was made, he would give me six steps how it should be done. Those who knew him well would remember his fondness for good whiskey, being a real connoisseur, and vanilla ice cream. He taught me how to sever a good whiskey. He was particularly fond of single malts. And when he opened a bottle, he would swirl it in his mouth, very slowly taste it, sever it, and then look up in the air and say, Pure nectar, Nippy. Pure nectar. <laughs> he would also tell me the best tasting vanilla ice creams available in the market. Because he was so fond of them. And usually he went by one brand, but sometimes he'd say, now this is no longer, they're not making it as they used to. Now he would change over to a new one. But he knew all that were available and Vanilla ice cream was the best ice cream as he was concerned. He had the memory of an elephant. I would remember incidents which happened decades ago. Sometimes he would relate them. But he had a way of relating everything in a very hilarious manner. And he would laugh at it with you after while he was relating it and a laughter which still rings in my ears. You know, he'd look up in the air and <laughs> it was. He was a voracious reader and he was up to date with all the latest movies and serials. And you could, he was so well informed and well read that you could talk to him on anything under the sun. And he could relate, tell you about, and be, inform you of something new that you didn't know already about. Whosoever's life he touched, 
has always remembered him as a fine, kind-hearted gentleman that he was and would never forget. He was my elder brother, a son to my mother and a very dear member of our family. He has stood by me throughout the last 40 plus years and he has been a great support through all the ups and downs in our life. He has left a void that cannot be filled, but I know he is there with me in spirit forever. will truly miss my dearest friend, Sachi. You know, even today, my mind says that I am here at the condolence meeting, but my heart is not ready to accept it. May Almighty grant eternal peace to his soul and give the strength to his family to bear this great loss. Om Shah. Can I please now invite Mr. P. S. Prasad, Yushu Faji's Om Jijaji. Can I have one more minute? Yes, sure. Please. I'm sorry. I'm not going to speak long. Just one minute because I forgot to mention. I didn't have notes and I forgot to mention an important point. He was generous to a fault, which was a bit of a handicap when we travel together because we always split the expenses. <coughs> anyway, when we went to Bhopal together, the breakfast, my my brother-in-law's son had arranged for our accommodation and the breakfast included the price of the room. So he anyway, went there and a fellow came and took our order. And there were different orders. One of us ordered scrambled eggs, the other ordered omelette and whatever it was. And so on it went. Some ordered our cornflakes, some ordered porridge and so on. After he left away, a woman came and plonked the same plate, same stuff in front of both our uh, seats. In other words, regardless of what fellow take it down, there is standard breakfast is served him and me. Now after the breakfast, he said, we must tip this girl. The girl had gone away and no payment had to be made because part of the room charges. So I said, when she's gone, how do we tip her? He said, no, we must look for her. She must be in the kitchen or somewhere. We'll find her. I said, look, this is too much. <laughs> if she doesn't expect a tip, she's gone. Now there's no way of finding her. I don't think we're going to look for her. So I managed to train him there. But when we landed at Delhi, I took a prepaid taxi home. And when he got up, before I could say anything, he took out 100 rupees and gave to the driver. So I said, why do you give 100 rupees? He said, that's a tip for him. I said, what tip? He prepaid. It's all good. I've, I've used this so many times. Never tipped the fellow. I'll never see him again. He said, no, it's all right. I said, well, this I'm not going to play. I'm not going to part of. He said, it doesn't matter. So that's why I did it. I thought I must mention this to you. His uh, generosity, his integrity, his total disregard for these things. He didn't care for money at all. We partitioned a property in Allahabad and he gave me my share and neither of us were interested in accounts and nobody bothered with anything. He was the one man in the whole world you could trust with anything without doubting for a moment that there's any need to check up or anything like that. He was totally detached. He, had, uh, he could be trusted totally. It's very rare to come across people of such integrity. Thank you. I have four questions. Ladies and gentlemen. Yush Kant was 10 years young, younger to me. And I had never imagined that I would be here on his prayer meeting. But as you have heard from the other speakers, he was such a personality, he was such a person that his life should be celebrated. I first met him in 1967, I think it was the 3rd December, at his house in Elgin Road, where I was being engaged to my wife. He had gone for tennis and he came home 
and I found a sprightling young, handsome young man. All that he told me was that, dear Ji, we love Modi Ji immensely. <coughs> what a way to tell the prospective husband to look after the sister. He has his own ways of doing things. I recall a poem. Main to ek saadi si tasveer chhod jaunga, rang khud aap hi bhar lenge zamane wale. To aaj Piyush Kaat ki tasveer mein rang bharne ka samaya. Piyush Kaat ek bhot uchh koti ke barishe the. सब की मदद करते थे, सब से प्यार करते थे, and he is the one person. Generally, people say that nobody has spoken a bad word about him. But Piyush Kant was one person who everybody, whoever came in his contact, praised him, had a good word for him, or any. Opportunity. He used to look for an opportunity to help me. If one was in need, he didn't have to ask him. The help would be readily available. ऐसे लोगों को लोग भूलते नहीं हैं और उनके जो कारनामे होते हैं जैसा कि आपने सुना सब लोग हमेशा याद रखते हैं राह में बच गए पैरों के निशान कौन किस शान से गुजरा था बता देते हैं तो पीयूष कांत के बारे में कुछ बताने की कुछ बोलने की जरूरत नहीं है वो जिस शान से गुजरे थे उसका एक एग्जाम्पल है आज और उनके परिवार के लिए एक बड़ा ही कठिन संकल्प है कठिन संकल्प ये है कि उन्होंने एक बड़ी ही रिच लेगेसी छोड़ी है और उस लेगेसी पे चलना बहुत मुश्किल है मगर हमें विश्वास है कि भगवान की कृपा से और उनके परिवार की सामान्य योग्यता के कारण उस लेगेसी को ये लोग कायम रखेंगे एक इंसिडेंट याद आता है मैंने जब पीयूष का रिटायर हो गए तो मैंने हमारा उनके साथ बहुत समय गुजरा छुट्टियों पर गए अभी रजनीकांत जी ने राजकार ट्रिप की बात की उस पर मैं भी था और शिमला तो लगभग हर साल ही हम लोग इनके साथ जाते थे तो एक दिन मैंने पीयूष खान से पूछा कि अब तुम रिटायर हो गए हो यू हैव हैड सच अ Busy life. What do you do to spend your time? And his answer is a true reflection of his character. He said, "Dear me, I three days to golf play. Two days bridge play. One day Friday go. First show, first day, first show cinema. I see." और सातवें दिन आराम करता तो मैंने पूछा और ये जो छह दिन आप ब्रिज खेलते हैं और बर्फ खेलते हैं तो, तो कहते हैं लगे बड़ा कठिन काम है तो उनकी हर चीज में अपनी एक अदा थी और उस अदा को उन्होंने बड़ी खूबी से निभाया और उस कदा उस अदा की सारे जमाने ने बड़ी कदर की अभी एक शेर और याद आ रहा है जो मैंने उनको उनके जन्मदिन दिन पर भी लिखा था कि हाँ और भी सफर कर वैसे तो हैं और भी सफर कर बहुत अच्छे कहते हैं कि गालिब का था अंदाज़ बयाँ तो तो पीयूष का जो भी करते थे 
एक अपने अंदाज से करते थे और उसमें एक सुंदरता होती थी एक मिठास होता था एक अपनापन होता था और किसी के संपर्क में वो जाते थे तो उसको वो उन्हें सहाय कर देते थे उसके लिए उन्हें प्यार करना की मजबूरी हो जाती थी इस प्रकार के मनुष्य थे वो और आज हमारे बीच वो नहीं है लेकिन उनकी याद उनकी संस्कृति उनकी परंपरा हमारे साथ रहेगी और उनकी पत्नी हु इज एन एपिटोम ऑफ ग्रेस और उनके पुत्र जो बहुत ही योग्य डॉक्टर हैं और बहुत अच्छा लिखते हैं और समाज के एक बड़े ही जिम्मेदार नागरिक हैं उनके ऊपर अब रजनीकांत की पीयूष कांत की परंपरा को निभाने का भार पड़ा है मैं भगवान से प्रार्थना करता हूँ कि उनकी आत्मा को शांति मिले और उनके परिवार में इतना बल आए इतनी योग्यता आए कि वो उनकी परंपरा को चला सके धन्यवाद पी के वर्मा ने श्रद्धांजलि समारोह के सारे आज मेरी नमस्कार मैं उन्होंने बारे तीन चीज़ा कह क्योंकि उन्होंने मैं मणिपुर के नौकरी कर सुहाग प्राप्त होया वो सि सिविल सर्विस के बच्चे मैं पुलिस सर्विस के बच्चे पहला तो यह उन्होंने तो सीख्या कि वो जो दफ्तर बैठे से उन्हें एक नाग पोस्ट को रखी हुई तो उन्हें सारा ही पहला आर्डर यह करते कि भी जो भी फाइल तो आर्डर उन्होंने इशू करता शाम पांच बजे तो पहला पहला वो ऑफिस कापी तो वो इनिशियल कराए नहीं तो कंसर्न क्लर्क में ऐसी तैसी हो जाएगी पंद्रह मिनट तो मुश्किल होया उस बाद काम इन्ना चल गया सारे काम आटोमैटिक होने शुरू हो गए मैं उन्होंने तो यह सीखा मैं अपने पुलिस को यही कहना कि तुम भी इंप्लीमेंट करो दूजा पहला मैनुअल भी है कि सोमवार को हरेक कलर्क पिछले सनेचर वाल पेंडिंग केसिस की लिस्ट बनाएगा तीस दिन तो घट सठ दिन तो घट नब्बे दिन तो घट वनू सवेरे सोमवार को तीन बजे सैकटरी या हेड ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट चैक करे तो लोगों के काम अपने आप शुरू हो जाते हैं लोगों के काम की होंगे एम एल ए को जाना या एम पी को जाना कि जी मैं इंक्यूमिटी लग्या टीए नहीं मिले डीए नहीं मिले मेरी फिक्सेशन ही वह जी करने ये जे इस अपना इंप्लीमेंट करते मैनू च लिखा हुआ मैं भी शुरू करती आटोमैटिक होते पीपल वो वेरी हैप्पी तीसरी उन्होंने तो यह सीखा कि भी आप जो आई एस आई पी सा एक टैसट पास करके छत्तीस साल खाते हैं ये जी एम एल ए और एम पी ने हर पंजा साल का टैसट पास कर दिया जो रोज़ एक कह दें कि तू गलत है तो अगली इलेक्शन तो जमात जब्त हो जाएगी वो प्यार गल सुन लो जी ठीक है और कभी शाम पाँच तो पहला पहला ऑर्डर हो जाएगा तू अपना मुद्दा छड़ के काफ़ी लै गया तो जी गलत है वह सपोर्टर बाहर भेज के उन्होंने कह दो भी ये मैं माफ़ी चाहता तो तुम कहते ठीक है यार जो तो सारी वोटर ने मैं धक्के टका दे जो काम ठीक है वही करेगा तो होर थोन में एक वो बारे दसा हूँ बाकी सारे कह चुके हैं ईवन पब्लिक तो वो इज्जत करती सी पर उ अंडरग्राउंड भी इज्जत करते कि ये एक एक अफसर है जो ईमानदार है फटाफट काम कर रहा कोई सिफारिश की लड़ नहीं मैं रब ने अरदास करा कि कोई रूल शांति बख्शे तो परिवार को भाड़ा बंधन का बल बख्शे नमस्कार In my case, it was not the blood, but the water, which was purer, more fragrant, and was laced with so much of love, affection, warmth, and commitment that I could, in my life, never have felt so saddened after my father's death. That happened in 1967 when he was merely 60, who was only merely 51. I felt so deeply saddened by Gunnar's demise. I was like everybody was completely shell shocked. But anyway, all one I want to say is, he was the most lovable person. We have spent a lot of holidays together. And to mention a very small incident, I am a performing artist. He not only came to all the wedding functions of two of my sons in Delhi. I was performing in Tarkatura Garden Stadium in Delhi. And of all the things, Gunnar said, Muni ji ji. I will come to hear this program. Imagine driving down from Chandigarh. One doesn't go for weddings. He came for a sitar concert. I will say no more. All I want to say is that he is the most lovable person, and I must add the love, the respect, 
and the honor in which he held his wife, Shubha. He called her, he looked upon her as a princess. And we have spent a holiday in Kashmir together. I know Shubha had a little bit of a problem. We were in Pahalgaon. All the facilities were not available. She needed ice for some treatment. There was no way that he could have not given it to her. She was the most, most supreme persona in his life. May God give her the strength. Let me tell Shubha, you are the princess for all of us, Shubha. We'll stand by you. We'll do what we can because it was Munna's legacy that we are all carrying forward. Chinku, Sulpi, Tina, Asit, and all the children. May God give you the strength to bear with this loss. Om Shant. Piyush Mukherjee was indeed the most loved and respected person. I think in all our memories and all our reflections and all our stories, it does come out very clearly that we were going to miss him a lot. Chinku, can I please request you to come over and help close the press release? Thank you everyone for coming. Uh, it means a lot to me. <laughs> and my mother, uh, my wife Swati, uh, my children Swani and Shivika. And I know that my sister is watching uh, from the US also. I want to thank also Ms. Isha and Sir Amun for, for being here uh, and for all the support that we have here and Panditji. I'm not going to say too much because uh, there's no way I can do that. Um, and all of you have heard from um, from my Thayaji, from Upaji, um, and of course from my MP uncle, and from Neera Khaisa. And I'm sure all of you who are here have your own personal uh, memories of my father. And uh, once again, I, I thank you for coming.